Hallo und willkommen zum sechsten Teil meines Let's Plays von The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow, einem Horror Point and Click Adventure von Cloak and Dagger Games herausgegeben von Wadget Eye Games. Das Video stammt aus einer Streaming Session auf Twitch, daher nehme ich meist mehrere Folgen am Stück auf und schneide Pausen heraus. Außerdem füge ich Kapitelmarker hinzu. Diese findet ihr unten in der Beschreibung und in der Abspielleiste. Wir spielen das Spiel auf Englisch mit Untertiteln. Ich freue mich auf eure Fragen und Hinweise in den Kommentaren und wünsche gruselige Unterhaltung. Ja, dann äh, herzlich willkommen zurück zu einer weiteren Folge im Let's Play von The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow, einem äh, Retro-Pixel-Art Point-and-Click-Adventure äh, aus, äh, aus der jüngeren Vergangenheit. Ich glaube 22, 21, irgendwie so. Es ist nicht ganz neu, nicht brenn brandheiß neu, aber es ist relativ aktuell. Wir haben... Die letzten sechs Folgen, glaube ich, es könnte jetzt die siebte sein, wenn ich mich nicht verzählt habe. Aber wenn ich mich verzählt habe, steht es ja in der Beschreibung richtig drin. Ähm, haben wir ja damit zugebracht, erstmal das namensgebende Hobbs Barrow, ein Hügelgrab offenbar, zu finden. Und es war gar nicht so einfach, weil offensichtlich hier schlimme Dinge passiert sind und äh, man uns nicht sagen wollte, wo es ist. Viele Leute wussten es womöglich, wollten es uns aber nicht sagen. Manche wussten es vielleicht auch gar nicht. Es ist alles sehr magisch gewesen. Und jetzt, äh, dann sind wir eingeladen werden vor, worden von Mr. Shoulder, um uns dieses Grab anzugucken. Mr. Shoulder, der uns aber nie begegnet ist. Äh, wir sind hier angekommen mit dem Zug. Äh, kein Mr. Shoulder. Wir haben übernachtet. Kein Mr. Shoulder. Wir waren bei Mr. Shoulder am äh, Haus. Kein Mr. Shoulder da. Also wir wissen immer noch nicht, wo er ist und was mit ihm los ist und warum er uns hier eingeladen hat. Denn er hat uns eingeladen, das zu ähm, besichtigen und auch auszugraben. Und der Besitzer des Landes, auf dem er sich befindet, hat aber gar, nicht, gar nichts davon gewusst und eigentlich auch keinen Bock, weil, wie gesagt, da hat, äh, sind schlimme Dinge passiert, eine traurige Geschichte mit seinem Bruder und ähm, er möchte nicht, dass wir dann ausgraben. Und ähm, insofern kann man ja nachvollziehen, ähm, dass wir jetzt hier gar nicht ausgraben können und wir aber den weiten Weg gekommen sind. Und wir haben das hier gefunden und haben jetzt auch einen kleinen... Einen kleinen ähm, Rückblende beim letzten Mal noch gesehen, dass uns das hier, also die nochmal Sina, die wir hier sehen, an ihre Vergangenheit und ihren Vater, der ihr das Ausgraben beigebracht hat, irgendwie erinnert. Und nun sind wir hier, es regnet und wir wissen nicht so richtig, was wir machen sollen. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Brydens permission to excavate. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Hmm. Yeah. No, that won't achieve anything useful. Okay. Okay, also ist ja wirklich auch nur Hobbs Barrow. Mehr ist nicht. Können wir drum I do have a feeling I must gain Mr. Ja, yeah, nein. Können wir drum rumgehen. Nee, nicht wirklich. Wir gehen mal davon aus, dass wir auch nicht drüber weggehen können. Und dann haben wir noch diesen... ...Stein gefunden, wo uns aber auch nicht so richtig klar ist, was man damit machen soll. Hm. Ja, dann gehen wir wieder, was? Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. Jo, kann ich das mit der Karte? Dafür haben wir sie hier. Hoffentlich 
sind ja ein paar ganz nette Effekte, muss man sagen. Dafür, dass es trotzdem noch ein Pixel-Adventure ist, gibt es ein bisschen Parallax-Effekte und ein bisschen Beleuchtungseffekte, würde ich behaupten. Good evening, Mr. Crazier. Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. It is truly a beauty. You're most welcome. How long have you been collecting fossils? Ever since I were a boy. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All manner of creatures to uncover. Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave me today. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. But what do you collect? Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Hi. Speak to you later. Ja, ich habe das Gefühl, so Stück für Stück können wir doch einzelne Menschen aus diesem Ort auf unsere Seite ziehen. Good evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, remember what I said, Miss Bateman. There are stories connected to that place. Yes, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far, there's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. A mug of your finest ale, please. There we are. That's two pence on your account. Thank you. Goodbye. See you soon. Good evening, gentlemen. What are you going to do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming. I am going to knock his bloody block off. <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off. You heard the man. Charming. <laughs> yeah. Menschen. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'll leave you to it. I don't wish to wake him up. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here. Did Mr. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? Now bugger off and leave me to me drink. He seems even more wound up than usual. A lovely place to warm oneself. The crackling fireplace is more welcoming than the facial expressions of the locals. Ja. <lacht> ich weiß es immer nicht, also Ne, es gibt ja so Dinge, wo man sagt, okay, das ist ein Hinweis des Spiels, dass du noch irgendwas machen kannst. Ich habe das auch schon gehabt, also am Ende des Tages, dass man hier entscheiden kann, ob man jetzt ins Bett geht oder nicht. Ich verstehe das nicht so ganz, weil die Frage ist ja, kann ich noch irgendwas machen? Also kann ich noch irgendwo hin? Kann ich noch irgendwas finden? Was ich bis jetzt noch nicht gefunden habe. Okay. Okay, also selbst, dass wir jetzt irgendwie zu unserer Kiste gehen oder so, scheint ja keine Option zu sein. Dann würde ich ja sagen... Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Oh. Miss Bateman. How are you? Tired. Gonna buy you a drink?
One won't hurt. Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. But worth trying? I don't need any further convincing. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. So things are moving as nice for time. Nice to find you can get you out again, good. As of now. To Leonard's shoulder. Whatever he may be. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes. Why did Leonard's shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. Hmm. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter, his proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sites steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your day sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got her. She would know but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. I used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. She'd get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected at a favorite oh. lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Lookout, we called it. Aye. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him and I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. 
<laughs> and another after that, and another. The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. I treasure the memory. Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I uh, mustn't. Sing the song. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right, then. Clasps, Celts, and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull! What is this? H who are you? I'm the one that saved your father. What do you mean? They were here 25 years ago. My father? You were deep down with the others. You were there and something went wrong. I dragged him out. Impossible. I helped him then and I can help him again. I, I don't understand. Believe my words. You'll find proof in morning. Now go. One more thing. This is not a dream. Expisco. Goodness, that was a terrible sleep. <laughs> What's this? There's a strange stone strapped to the cover. Na, dann lesen wir mal. Day one. Arrived after a decent day's ride from Bakewell. This is a curious place. Locals seem distant. I'm to meet my local contact tomorrow, so it will be an early night for me. I shall try to keep a diary of my stay here and not give up by day three of the excavation as usual. Despite the thrill of possible new discoveries, I cannot stop thinking about my dear wife and wonder if I should have left her in her current state. I must have faith that he will, she will conquer this boat of illness. Day, day four. True to form, my journal has been abandoned. Let that not speak for the excitement I feel for this excavation. After much preparation, we dig tomorrow. Such an exceptional site with a unique history. As for the dangers, we shall meet, shall meet them head first. <clears throat> we are prepared. I also sought out a local wise woman yesterday and she provided me with a tincture for my beloved nausea gravidarum. I'm sure she shall be pleased with it upon my return. Lo, a place of miracles. 
planted seeds sprouted before your eyes and illuminated our path. Nature's laws hold no meaning here, but I clutch my tablet with the knowledge that it shall end this. Rho, Theta, Epsilon, D. We found the code was simply in the singularity of the characters. All eyes must face towards the seventh Archontic. Archontic? I don't know. When the sun and the two moons meet, the guardian shall be defeated. A dead language reveals the path. For though art the moon, the Chief of the stars, listen to the things that I have said, follow the words of my mouth, reveal thyself to me. I heard a whisper not once, again and again. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. It appears to be a journal, full of hogwash. I don't recognize the handwriting. Maybe Stanley knows more about it. Good morning. How's your head, Miss Bateman? That was quite the tune you treated us to last night. To be honest, Stanley, I felt better. I take it you slid this journal under my door? I beg your pardon? The journal, Stanley. Well, I certainly did no such thing. Nor could have anyone else. You're the only guest staying here. What's the meaning of all this? Do you propose that it manifested itself out of thin air? Well, uh... <laughs> hmm. Sollen wir ihn weiter quicken oder sollen wir? Ich meine, es ist die einzig rationale äh Erklärung, es sei denn, irgendjemand anderes ist in das Haus gekommen, was ja nicht unmöglich ist. Objects do not appear from nowhere. You must have put it there. Miss Bateman, I've never even seen this book before. I'm sorry. I just don't understand how else it could have got there. Hmm. Are you sure there was no one else here overnight? Without doubt. How very, very peculiar. So, what does it say inside? Take a look. Well, I can't make head nor tail of it. Neither can I. Maybe someone else in the village can help you with it. What do you make of this stone? That's a funny looking thing. It's got a cockerel on it. Yes, but have you seen anything like it? Never. Do you ever have strange dreams, Stanley? Me? I sleep as sound as a baby. I had one such dream last night. It was so vivid. What were it about? I was at Hobbs Barrow. Oh? But everything was different. Great peaks soared in the distance. And there was a creature. A creature, you say? Yes, a short, robed fellow, eyes as black as pitch. It told me that my father had been there in Hobbs Barrow many years ago. But something went wrong, and the creature helped him escape. It said that I would find proof in the morning. Oh, the journal! You've had a premonition, lass! Please, Stanley, I've no time for that nonsense. But I'll admit it's a strange coincidence. Now, what did I tell you about Hobbs Barrow? That I should leave it alone? Aye. Hogwash. Your dream reminds me of a story from my childhood. An old folk tale about Hobbs Barrow. What is this folk tale you mention? Well, when I were a wee boy, there were talk of a goblin. They say he lived inside Hobbs Barrow, hence the name Hobbs Barrow. Hob, coming from Hob Goblin, of course. Unfortunately, I don't remember anything else about it. I was told not to believe in such fairy tales, Stanley. Don't close your mind to such things, lass. I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you more. Perhaps. If I ever meet him. Goodbye. See you soon. Good morning, Mr. Kemp. Good day, Miss Tompkins. I'm here for his lordship's paper. Sorry, lass. Mr. Price hasn't dropped them off this morning. I heard he actually left the village yesterday. 
Indeed, I can vouch for that. Ma'am, good day. Oh dear, his lordship won't be pleased. My sincerest apologies, Miss Tompkins. I'll come back in a few days. Ta-ra! Goodbye. Goodness me, I can't budge it. Be careful, Miss Bateman. You'll cut yourself. I spent all morning trying to get that bloody thing out. I shall be having words with that scoundrel next time he shows his face. <laughs> Curses. We have our very own Excalibur. It's all yours if you can pull it out, King Arthur. <laughs> Hm, haben wir irgendwas, was nicht damit... I do not wish to damage Mr. Kemp's table any... Hm. das kann man natürlich verstehen. Wir wollen ja nicht abbrüten. I can't see how that will help me. Weiß ich nicht. Kann ich es ja mal probieren. I do not wish to damage Mr. Kemp's table any further than it already has been. Ja... I can't see how that will help me. Ich auch nicht, aber ich bin wenigstens willens, Dinge auszuprobieren. Hmm. No, that won't work. Won't work. Yeah, nothing works, apparently. Right. I need to convince Mr. Bryden to let me excavate Hobbs Barrow and find out where this journal came from. Curses! I forgot I had this worm in my pocket. Poor thing is dead now. Rest in peace, Kenneth. I've just noticed this matchbox is completely damp from the rain. The match is no use to me anymore. Also haben wir schon zwei Dinge eingebüßt. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. She is busy setting up her stall. Okay. Würde ihr ja vielleicht helfen und ein bisschen Geld verdienen wollen? Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman. What a pleasure to see you again. Have you tracked down Mr. Shoulder yet? Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. Indeed. Do you recognize this journal? Hmm, what a tatty old thing. You ought to take better care of your possessions, Miss Bateman. It's not mine. Then whose is it? That's precisely what I'm trying to find out. I'm afraid I can't help you. I haven't seen it before. What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. What brings you to the square today? I'm meeting a couple of young congregation members to go over some scripture. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, Father Roach, but I have quite a busy day ahead of me. We will be at St. Edmunds, should you wish to join us later. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. A rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Aye, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land. Something I wholeheartedly disagree with. To which god his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. Why do you say that? Oh, my apologies. Don't listen to my oafish conjecture. Let us move on. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Hmm. Jemand hier. Mal noch mal in unsere Kiste gucken. Möglicherweise ist da ja noch was Spannendes drin. It's my crate of excavation tools. Perhaps I have something in here that could help me get the knife unstuck. Zum Beispiel. Hmm. No, there's nothing useful here. I don't wish to wake him up. It's Herbert, the local stray. Hey! 
Hello, Wally. Go away! You gave the door back to my sister. It wasn't very nice of you to bury her favourite toy, Wally. I gave it to the fair folk! And you stole it back from them! You don't really believe in fairies, do you? You're old enough to know better. They're real! And thanks to you, I'm cursed! There's no such thing as curses either, Wally. Go away! Now we have uns hier keinen Freund gemacht. Ja, wo gehen wir denn jetzt dann hin? Zu Mr. Brydens Farm können wir natürlich noch mal gehen. Wir können natürlich auch versuchen, noch mal Mr. Shoulder zu finden. Der uns hier an die ganze Sache eingebrockt hat. Mr. Shoulder continues to prove himself elusive. No sign of any movement. Gut. Das hilft uns ja nicht weiter. Zen, let's go to the forest. Thomasina. Good morning, Arthur. You look a bit addled. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. Aye, my head is pounding. To tell you the truth, Arthur, I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers to some sort of excavation. Well, Stanley must be playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. I wonder who left me this journal then? Mind if I take a closer look? Please, go ahead. The writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Do the sketches mean anything to you? No, not at all. But they turn my stomach. You might want to show this to Mother Mildred. Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? Aye. She might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within Hearn Wood here. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. You're welcome. What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. How mysterious. I had a splendid time last night. Aye. I even remember most of it this time. <laughs> Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. Thank you too, Arthur. Shouldn't you be manning the station? The line is down. Track damage between Bewley and Bakewell. No trains for a day or more. Does that mean I'm stranded here? For the time being, Thomasina. Capital. Why do people think Mother Mildred is a witch? Just because a woman lives alone in the woods doesn't mean she flies about on a broomstick. There's more to it than that. They say she lays with demons. Who are they? Oh, you know, local folk. Hogwash. Some also go to her for potions and spells. Spells? Come now, Arthur. Truth be told, she's a nice old lady. I sometimes see her foraging in the brambles around here. Will she burn at the stake sometime soon? You might think us backward in Beulet, Thomasina, but we're not that backward. Sorry, Arthur. I only meant to tease. Goodbye. Tara. Ooh, wir haben wieder ein Flashback. Thomasina, dear, come say goodbye to your father. Come on now, don't make him wait. I don't want to. Aren't you going to miss me? I hate you, Daddy. Those are strong words for such a little lady. I want to come with you. 
We've been through this, little bird. You can't come with me this time, but we'll go to Seabra next month. I promise. Oh, what a dig that shall be. I hate you! Well, I love you. See you soon, little bird. Hmm. <laughs> Ja, die müssten mit ihrer Ausgrabung, äh, nicht Ausgrabung, mit ihrem <lacht> Holzfällen ja nun fertig sein. Please, forgive my intrusion. Are you Mother Mildred? Some call me that. I prefer Mildred Walker, given as that's my name. Apologies. Thomasina Bateman. I think we met at Bewley Station. I take it Panswick's men have cleared off. Good riddance. Those ruffians would cut their own noses off if he asked them to. How's your sightseeing going, then? I... Save your words, young lady. I know you're no sightseer. And I know exactly why you're in Bewley. You won't get far by lying to me again. I'm sorry, I... I recognised you the moment I laid eyes on you at the station. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, it's quite a striking family resemblance. You have your father's eyes, Miss Bateman. You knew my father? Such piercing blue eyes he had. What a handsome young man. William. He was here? In Bewley? Oh, yes. A long time ago, mind. 25 years by my reckoning, but I'll never forget those eyes. Why was my father in Bewley? He were helping Samuel Bride and excavate Hobbs Barra. You must be jesting. Do I look like I'm jesting? How did you come to meet my father? One might say I have a reputation in these parts. Folks from all around come to me for help with their ailments. Hernwood is abundant with flora that, if mixed correctly, will cure almost any ill. Your father must have caught wind of this, as one day he came to me, asking for a cure. A cure for what? Your mother was with child, and she was suffering the most terrible nausea. Adam. I made something to help her. The journal. This was entered in the journal. It belongs to my father. What journal? Take a look at this. A passage recalls meeting a local wise woman to seek a tincture for his beloved's nausea gravidarum. Aye, that's me. I made the tincture for him. This... this is incredible. You don't recognise your own father's handwriting? It's been so many years since I've seen it. What do you make of this stone? I-A-W. I haven't a clue. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket, or a talisman of some kind. The moors are steeped in folklore. What can you tell me about the excavation? Well, not much. I only met your father twice. The last time he asked me if I knew anything about binding magic. Binding magic? He said he needed it for the excavation. Hogwash. My father is a man of logic and reason. Why would he be asking about such nonsense? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think you do. Anyway, I know nothing of magic and told him so. He seemed disappointed. I never saw him again, but I understand the excavation went ahead. Samuel bride and hanged himself not long after. Reason enough for you to stay well clear of that place. You never saw my father again after the excavation? No. I always assumed he just went home. Hmm. Who excavated Hobbs Barrow alongside Samuel Bryden and my father? From memory, it were just the two of them. What do you think my father meant by binding magic? I've no idea. He didn't explain more and I didn't wish to pry. Hmm. This just doesn't sound like my father at all. You'll have to ask him yourself. I'm afraid my father has been incapacitated since I was a child. He cannot speak nor move. Terrible. Oh, I I'm sorry. You said that the flora here could cure almost any ill. Almost, my dear. 
that your father's affliction sounds beyond my abilities. The landlord of the Plough and Furrow told me about a folk tale associated with Hobbs Barrow. Something about a goblin. Are you familiar with it? No doubt there is such a tale. Name any beastie you can think of and someone round here will have a story about it. My thoughts precisely. Charles Bryden mentioned there was a third man involved in the excavation. Is that so? Well, you'd best ask him about it. He knows more than I do. Can you tell me anything about Leonard's shoulder? I know of him, as is the nature of such a small town. I also know he invited you here. Little escapes you, Miss Walker. So they say. <laughs> My path rarely crosses with his. Let's put it that way. But he's a nice enough fellow. I see. Do you know Lord Panswick? I know his labourers make a mess of these woods, the brutes. The man himself hasn't graced me with his presence. You've never met him? Not since he were a wee lad. A maid brought him to me with a sore stomach. It were all the rich food they were feeding him. Now more. Thank you for your help, Ms Walker. Okay. Haben wir ja jetzt ein bisschen was rausgekriegt? They look somewhat like juniper berries. What are those berries you're picking? An ancient breed. No good for eating. However, they do have some medicinal qualities. I see. Ich nehme mal nicht an, dass wir hier... enter uninvited. Richtig, das macht man nicht. Miss Bateman? Yes? Remember what I told you when we first met? You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. Why? Something terrible happened to Samuel Bryden in that barrow. Whatever they found down there, I'd wager it got to your father too. Tell me you won't disturb Hobbs Barrow. I can't make that promise, Mildred. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is something unnatural about that place. We must seek to understand the world by rational means, Miss Walker. One cannot abandon reason. Hmm. Thomasina? Thomasina, come here this instant. I'm playing with Josephine. She can wait. This is very important. Hmm. I'll be back soon, Josephine. What is it, Mummy? It's... it's your father. Daddy's home? No, my dear. I must go to Bakewell with haste. Miss Bowes will look after you whilst I'm gone, is that clear? Where's Daddy? He's had... An accident. What happened? He's come off his horse. Silly daddy. Will he be all right? Of course. Of course he will be fine. Your father is as strong as an ox. But I need to go collect him. All right? Can't I come too? No, dear. Miss Bowes will look after you. But I want to come. Go pick up your dolls, then come inside. All right? Yes, mummy. Josephine, it's time to go inside now. Where did Mommy go? Hmm. Ja. Das ist ja doch einigermaßen persönlich. The resin has set somewhat. It's firmly gripped to the stump. Aber es ist ja nicht so, als ob ich hier nicht massenhaft Werkzeug hätte. I've collected some waxy resin. I helped him then. And I can help him again. Hmm. Arthur! 
You won't believe it. The journal belongs to my father. He was here in Bewley. Arthur? Hello? Oh, sorry. I'm trying to remember something. What is it? I'm not sure. Something in the woods. It will come back to me. You say your father were in Bewley? Yes. Mildred said that he helped Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow 25 years ago. Well, I'll be. Let's talk about it tonight at the plough. Arthur, I must tell you about the dream I had. I was at Hobbs Barrow and there was a creature. It told me it saved my father from something inside and that I would find proof of this in the morning. Sure enough, when I awoke, the journal was in my room. Mildred confirmed the journal belonged to my father. The creature told me it could help my father again. I mean, it was merely a dream. I don't know what to think anymore. Arthur? Arthur, are you listening? Fine then, we'll talk later. I hope you piece together your memories. He is staring intently into the woods. Hm. Ja, ein Blick auf die Uhr bzw. den schon ausgeblendeten Timer zeigt uns, dass wir wieder eine Folge hinter uns gebracht haben, <lacht> sozusagen. Ähm, ja, von daher ähm, denke ich mal, würden wir dann beim nächsten Mal weitermachen. Ähm, es ist ja, es wird ja immer mysteriöser, muss man sagen. Jetzt haben wir eine Verbindung zu unserer Familie, zu unserem Vater gefunden. Natürlich ein Grund mehr, dieses, äh, diese Ausgrabung dann doch noch zu machen, aber ich bin mir auch nicht sicher, wie wir den Herrn Bryden davon überzeugen werden. Ich denke mal, das wird noch spannend und immer noch haben wir nicht den mysteriösen Mr. Scholl gefunden. Das ist natürlich ein weiteres Rätsel. Etwas hat sich gelichtet, aber dafür gibt es noch mehr Rätsel. Also es ist alles sehr mysteriös. Von daher ähm, sehen wir uns bei der nächsten Folge zu diesem Let's Play. Ähm, und äh, bis dahin äh, viel Spaß und Gutes Rätsel. Herzlichen Dank fürs Zuschauen. Lasst gern eure Meinung zum Video in den Kommentaren da oder klickt die entsprechenden Buttons. Meine ganzen Let's Plays gibt es auch als Playlisten auf YouTube oder Peertube, wo ihr mir gerne folgen könnt. Die Links gibt es unten in der Beschreibung. Bis denn dann!